on Tuesday, there was a school meeting in Salem Kaiser. Uh, now, I don't know. I don't think I have it. I didn't put it down. All over the country, uh, all over the country, there are uh, groups that are trying to, um, they're right wing groups. And they're trying to, to take over the school districts so they can uh, replace the curriculum with basically like non-curriculum. Remember, the right wing doesn't want people to be educated because educate, educated people think for themselves. And when they think for themselves, it's hard to control them. So, so fascists, right wing... Do not want people to be educated. So to that end, they're going all over the country and harassing school boards and trying to take over school boards so that they can implement their their anti-education philosophy um, all over the place, all over the country. They did it here in Salem. But the difference here in Salem is that since the 90s, there has been a group called, an activist group, called Latino Latinos Unidos Siempre, Luz. This group, since the 90s, has been fighting to, to overcome uh, SROs, in, which are school resource officers, which makes it sound like a nice thing but like remember like it's like orwellian newspeak that's what it is it's orwellian newspeak <laughs> what what they really are are cops they're cops in schools they have they have cops in schools because why would you put cops in schools like <laughs> because it sets up a school to prison pipeline the cops are the kids first uh, interaction with the carceral state, the state of the, the the system that that incarcerates human beings, and it gets them started young. Studies show that the the earlier you have interactions with a carceral state, the more likely you are to get sucked in for the rest of your life. And if you look at it, and they did, the majority of of problems that that, that happen with SROs happen to minority kids, which means minority kids end up getting sent to prison. So that's the way why it's a school to prison pipeline. So since the 90s, Luce has been fighting this and they were real successful recently. They 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 launched a campaign to replace four of the what six, seven um, members on the school board. And all four of them were replaced with progressive candidates. So it was a mad success. Grats. Um, but so they had, so they were lucky, right? They were lucky because they had the infrastructure in place to, to defend themselves against this new wave of critical race theory, like BS that, that, uh, the right wing is trying to, to, uh, scare people with. So, um, so they were ready. <laughs> and when it came when it came to Salem, they put out a call saying, "Hey everybody, hey everybody, we need bodies at the school district meeting to like defend us against the the the, the white supremacists who are coming to to like break our school." So I showed up, right? I showed up and I live tweeted the whole thing. And of all the white parents. That were there. They were all saying roughly the same thing, which is a repeat of what they heard off of right wing media. Um, they were concerned about Marxism and communism in the schools and um, what else? The school was going to debate a uh, anti-racism resolution. 
and there were there were white parents coming in saying that they were opposed to the anti-racism resolution because it said white supremacy and they don't want to, they didn't want white people being singled out. But the problem is you don't have to be white to be a white supremacist. <laughs> you know that, you know that saying, um, hit a dog and it hollers. That's what happened at that school board meeting because the anti-racism resolution does not talk about white people at all. It never, ever mentions white people. It never mentions white people at all. It never talks about it. Never talks about white people. Never, never. But <laughs> it does condemn white supremacy and racism. So a bunch of parents came out to say they oppose this resolution because it talks about them. Sorry, dude. <laughs> like, if you're against it, it's because you're a white supremacist or a racist. It never talked about white people. But if you identify as a white supremacist or a racist, you might feel targeted. <laughs> ah, you see him? You see him? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it was funny and at the end at the end of the thing the school board voted four to two in favor of of passing the resolution who were the two people that voted against the resolution one of them is named shandragiri 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 he is indian indian american um and he uh, is very, very, very conservative. He's very conservative. So he opposed the resolution. I don't know why. He, 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 he said he didn't want people to be singled out. Or to, but it only singles out white supremacists, which is the point of it. So, like, and it's, a, it's a tell. He's telling on himself. And then another thing about who was Daniel... Danielle Bethel was also opposed to the resolution, the anti-racism resolution, because she felt it targeted white people. But it never talks about white people. Oh, <laughs> look what you fell into. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Here's another one. Here's another one. Approximately 60,000 Canadians currently live undocumented in the United States. You don't see the militarized presence, cops on horseback, and calls for a wall on that border. The issue has never been about immigration. It has been about anti-blackness and racism. That's right. <laughs> I think something like 40%, 40%, well, 40, 50, something like huge amount of, of, immigra of illegal immigration to the United States come by plane. They never, cross, they never cross a land border. They fly in and they just don't leave, right? I know a lot of people who do that, right? They come from other countries and, you know, fly in and just get a job, just don't leave, right, right? It happens all over the world. I saw it all over the world. All over the world, they, they do this. But in the United States, for some reason, <laughs> for some reason, no one no one talks about the 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 flow the flood of of white illegal immigrants. Why? Because they're white. That's telling on yourself. <laughs> I mean, there's so many ways they tell on themselves. Okay. Oh yeah, here. Racism in prison. Remember I was telling you about the prison system? Americans tolerate stark racial inequality in carceral outcomes. 
partly because they fail to appreciate structural racism, focusing instead on the influence of interpersonal racism. So here, let's look at this. Black is red and white is blue. So pr prison admission rate, you see, like, since the beginning, black Americans have always been way more incarcerated than white Americans. But what happened here? What's what's the sudden thing here? What happened here? This here, my friend, is Reagan's war on drugs. The CIA invented crack cocaine, and then <laughs> and even though crack cocaine and and powdered cocaine are exactly identical, poor people, poor black people use crack cocaine and rich white people use powdered cocaine. So the sentencing for crack cocaine even though they're the same thing, but the, but because crack cocaine was used by black people, they had a huge prison sentence compared to, to the, the drug that white people used. Even though it's the same drug, it's in a different form. So that's what happened here. The CIA invented crack cocaine, dumped it in the inner cities, and then the law changed to say crack cocaine got punished way worse than powder cocaine, which is what the white people were using. Which is so black people got super incarcerated in that like just a massive explosion in the from the drug war, and you can see it from here too. They, I don't know why they didn't do it before, but yeah, it's it's structural. It's structural. Like people people want to point out and say, oh oh, it's because like of indig individual failings or individual racists in individual places. No, dude, it's a giant system. We live in the middle of it. It's built of symbols that are invisible unless you, like, look for them. I mean, they're not invisible. They're right in front of your face. But they're, like, they're so obvious that they become invisible. You know, I don't know how to say it. They're hiding in plain sight, I, th I guess is the word they say. How do you say it? It's hiding in plain sight. Keep falling in, my skeleton beauties. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your donation. <laughs> For science! 